Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. Okay, so in today's video, we're just gonna be creating this design right here. It's a really easy design and there's lots of different ways that you can go with it. I'm gonna be kind of discussing a little bit of text selection and, and whatnot. And so if you're interested in learning how to create this design, a little bit about this niche, go ahead and stick around. All right, so here we are on Canva's home page and I do have a pro account that is my caveat with this. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the top right hand corner where it says custom size. And from there, we're just gonna go ahead and select 4,500 by 5,400 pixels and pull up on a blank page. Um, now I do like to design for black only because that is the top selling uh, t-shirt color. And so if I'm gonna optimize, that is the color I choose to optimize for. But again, you can design on any color that you like and it will change product to product. Um, for example, if you were designing for a sticker, those are always on a white background. That would definitely change the way that you're optimizing your design. Um, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and design for a t-shirt. So I've got my black page up. And for this one, we are gonna go ahead and do another funny Thanksgiving style design. This one is going to say leftovers are for quitters. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is just pull up a text box. So I hit T on my keyboard and I'm just gonna go ahead and write left. Oops. Leftovers are for, oops, can never spell right though. R for, and then quitters I'm gonna put at the bottom, but let's go ahead, something there, and then one more text box down here, for, and then I'm gonna put quitters. And quitters is gonna be in all caps here. Matter of fact, the top I'll probably put in all caps too, so let's just do that. Leftovers are for quitters. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have a graphic in the middle and it's gonna have a nice turkey dinner. And for this style, I think I'm gonna do um, sort of more of that sort of retro sunset kind of look. So let's go ahead and start with a nice little retro sunset background here. So when I go up to elements, I can go ahead and I can search for retro sunset. Oops, again, can't spell sunset and go to graphics. And what you can see is there are all sorts of different options for your retro sunset graphics. And a lot of these have a nice grunge look to them. Some of them will allow you to change the colors, some won't, but we're just looking for something that kind of screams fall. And so again, you can go with the circle look, you can go with the rectangle look, there's all sorts of different options. These have been very popular for a long time in terms of just the sunsets, so you can do whatever you like in terms of those. Let's say I was to pick this one. I do kind of like the top colors there so I can crop out those. Matter of fact, it would probably even be closer to like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, not that one, rotate this around. So maybe I make that, something like that. Oops. And so you can see how that could be a nice background there. It's got that nice grunge look to it. And I could of course make this grunge. And so you can play, pick ones that you want. You may not wanna go grunge. Maybe you wanna go something that's a little bit more smooth. So I could do something like this if I'm going more smooth. So go ahead and sort of pick the style that you want. Here's one that's a little bit more muted in terms of the colors. So again, this one's gonna have some lighter colors and this one's still kind of grunge. And so that one might look good. And so pick something that has some nice, again, just fall colors and um, go for it, play around. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and go with this one. Now you can always make multiple versions of this too. So let's say that you like it and you wanna make you know, a few different versions, you can definitely do it that way. So let's just go ahead and say, I'm gonna take this one, maybe even bring it down just a little bit. Depends how I like that. That'll work, something like that. 
So there's my retro sunset. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick some fonts. So now for the top font, I'm gonna have this kind of curve around the top, the basic style that I'm sure you've seen a bunch of times. So I do need it to be a little bit more narrow so I can make it big enough, okay? Otherwise, if I made it too wide, it would be very, very small. So let's go ahead and we're gonna pick something that has to be a little bit more grunge, but it also has to be a little bit narrow. So I'm gonna hit grunge and see what comes up in my text search or my font search. And I'm just gonna go ahead and come down. One of the ones I like here is called Zoomy Rough Bold because it's nice and narrow, but it also gets that good grunge look to it. So I could definitely do something like that. Pull it on out. And again, I could make this circle a little bit smaller too if I needed to make sure my circle is centered. And then take this, I'm gonna make sure this is nice and centered. And then I'm gonna go up to effects. And I'm gonna go down to where it says curve. And now I can play with my curve a little bit. And so I can make my curve kind of match the circle a little. And again, I can sort of also play with where this all lines up. So something like that looks good. That's a little bit tough to read. It may be a little higher than I'd like. I can play with the spacing too. So if I go with letter spacing just to space it out, I could do something like that. It is a little bit bigger than I'd like. So maybe I come down. And this is where you just sort of have to play a little bit. So I wanna make sure I've got some space there. Again, I'm gonna open up my circle some more now that I've shrunk that down. Something like that. And so let's say something like that looks pretty good. I've got my leftovers are for quitters. I could still go with a different font if I want to. That's just gonna you know, make it nice and big. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead down here for quitters and same thing, I'm looking for something grunge and so I've got grunge up. I could do the same thing. Now if I use that font, it is going to make this pretty darn big. Now that might be good if you like it to be that big. There's definitely gonna be a differential in size for the text. Or let's say maybe I go with something that maybe isn't quite as narrow. Maybe I pick something that's a little bit wider and so you can see how some of the ones that are wider would look if I did something there. Now you can see the size differential. And so you may just have to play with the different fonts and the different styles until you get more or less what you want. And so lots of different options to go with, as you can see here. Okay, so after playing a little bit with the fonts, I've come up with this that I think looks pretty good. So this top font here, I went ahead and went with Kent Printed. It's not quite as narrow, um, but it's still a pretty narrow font. And then uh, for the bottom, I went ahead and went with the Zoomy Rough of Bold. They both give a good rough texture, they're both consistent with the graphic and they're both consistent with each other, but I think that gives sort of the best combination and ability to read. Now on the top one, I didn't leave any spacing in between the letters, so it is as it's supposed to be or as it would be if you just wrote it down. The bottom one here, I did add just a little bit of spacing in between the letters by coming up to spacing, and I put it at like 30 so that it wasn't quite as tight. And so those are just different ways you can play with it. And so now this is what I've got. And now I can go ahead and play with some of the font colors too. Remember if I'm designing for a dark shirt, I need these font colors to be nice and light, but I don't necessarily want them to be white unless I've got white in the background or in the design itself. If I have white in the design itself, it's fine. If not, it might just look like it doesn't go. So let's just say I'm going to go ahead and use my add a new color. I'm gonna use my little eyedrop feature and I'm gonna go ahead and maybe pick the lighter orange here or maybe even the yellow off of this just to make it nice and light. And I can do that for both of these here. And you can sort of see how that works. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna put a little turkey design, turkey dinner kind of in here. So I'm gonna go over to uploads and from here we are, oops, not uploads, sorry. I'm gonna go over to elements and from here, we're just gonna go ahead and look for turkey. Now I can put turkey, turkey dinner might be better because I don't necessarily want the animal so much as the dinner. And so you can see different versions of that turkey dinner that might look good. So even just taking this top one here, 
selecting the platter, putting it right there, and you can already see the way that looks, and it looks kind of nice. And then I can play with bringing maybe some of these colors in instead of the bright yellow. Um, but once you find the turkey, then you can work on sort of making sure everything meshes. So that's one good option for a turkey. And again, you can just sort of keep playing. So that was an option. Here's another one. I don't really like the watercolor look on that one as much. Here was another one, and that one sort of had the watercolor look again, but I don't really like the way that it's angled. And so you may have to, again, just look, play, see what your options are. Right now, the first one was the best one. I could always just put a turkey. So for example, here's a turkey and it even allows me to change the colors so it matches. But I think I want it to look more like turkey dinner because it's all about leftovers and turkey dinner. So I might want to keep that. Here's one. This one's a little bit more vertically oriented, so I'm not sure I like that. I suppose I could take it and rotate it like that but that is more of a looking down view versus the side view. I don't think it goes with the design. So again, we just keep looking. Here's another one. This one's got more of a cartoony sort of look, but I like that. So there's an option there. So that one might be good. And it's got a little bit of a textured look to the turkey. So that's an option right there. And so we'll just keep playing and keep looking until we find one that kind of looks the best. Here's another good one with the turkey, and this one's got some like potatoes and whatnot. I do like that it's on the plate, and so that looks kind of cool. And in terms of the size and how it's filling the page, I think this one's looking pretty nice. So something there might work pretty good. And so just continuing to play now here you've got something that isn't just turkey, but it's got turkey and pies. And so that's one way to go, but it's not really as high as I'd like it to be in terms of filling the page. Another one here, this one's pretty similar to this one. We can see pretty close. I do still like the first one the best though, and I like the bottom of the dish being a little bit more square, because I think that works better with the bottom of the, um, the sunset um, here's just on some flat plates and so a flat plate there might work well but I'm not loving the style and so this is what you have to do when you're designing you really have to go through and start looking at all sorts of different options see which ones look the best you may have several that you like and you may put several that you like up and that is totally fine too so if you've got multiple versions of a design you can absolutely do that because what you like better may not be what somebody else likes better. So it is a good idea sometimes to get different variety of things. Here is one, oops, this one's a little bit more of a fall kind of looking one. You've got your turkey with its legs right up in the air for some reason, <laughs> but it's got, it's got a pie and it's got an apple. So it gives it a little bit more of a leftover kind of feeling. But again, just keep searching. You might also want to put Thanksgiving dinner. So let's try that. So after looking at a lot of different options and kind of deciding what I thought was the best, I decided to come up with this one right here. It fit the screen nice and it had some good detail to it. It's not exactly a grunge look, but it still looks nice. And if I liked this, I could of course change my sunset and text to be not grunge. I could keep the exact same look, but get rid of the grunge if I wanted to make it more cohesive. So lots of different ways I could go with this. I'm gonna go ahead and change the text color here to kind of match the turkey color a little bit more. So instead of that yellowy color, I want more of the lighter color here on the turkey. Something like that looks pretty good or even where it's got the shine on the turkey, I can use my eyedrop feature again and get right into that kind of more whiter, shinier area, something like that. And that looks pretty good. And of course, I could keep that and take this one and make it a different color. And I could go with the background color or I could go with the turkey color. I could go with kind of however I wanted to. That's a little darker than I'd like and so, it's all about playing around and sort of seeing what it is that you like. 
that's going to pop and I do like that. So really, again, a nice simple design, but just, you know, um, working on just combining different elements and text and playing with it until it all looks cohesive. It needs to fill the page, you know, it needs to be big enough that it can be easily read and easily recognizable. And of course, humor is always good. So whenever we're creating these kind of designs, especially for, you know, things like Thanksgiving, humor is great. If you can come up with some funny shirts that somebody might wear over to a Thanksgiving party with their family or whatnot, something that's, you know, going to make people laugh, it's always a good idea and it's a good sell. Um, so if you have any questions just about this um, design or anything else or anything else that you want to see seen or covered, um, go ahead, drop it in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. I've got one more Thanksgiving uh, style design um, video coming. And along with that video, because it's a very easy design, I'm gonna also give you guys a list of several more Thanksgiving style niches that are popular every year. So go ahead and stick around for that video and stick around till the end if you want, you know, some good niches that you can also continue to work on. Um, I hope you guys are doing great with your sales. I hope you're, you know, well into your season four preparations or uploads and um, just take care. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.